Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to yet another video of Tech Wafer. Hopefully you are having a great day. Adil here, your host. And in this video, we are going to review the Realme X3 Super Zoom. A device that has a quad camera setup at the back with the dual selfie shooter on the front and that's not important. It has a periscope lens or the first ever periscope in this price segment. And with that we are getting a 120Hz panel at the front. Let's find out more about this device in our review. Here we go. Speaking about the camera, the primary lens of this smartphone is a 64 megapixel sensor with f1.8 aperture and it is Samsung's GW1 sensor and it captures wide shots. Along with it, we are getting a periscope lens at the top and it is an 8 megapixel sensor with f3.4 aperture and it can zoom up to 5x optically and up to 60x digitally. And beneath the primary lens sits an ultra wide sensor with f2.3 aperture and it is an 8 megapixel sensor. And the last but not the least is 2 megapixel macro lens with f2.4 aperture. And speaking about the camera setup at the front, we are getting a dual selfie shooters like Realme 6 Pro on this smartphone with primary lens being 32 megapixel sensor with f2.5 aperture and it is a wide lens. Along with it we are also getting an 8 megapixel ultra wide lens with f2.2 aperture. And this phone sports electronic image stabilization from the front camera. So the videos that we get out of the front camera are also electronically stabilized. The images that are taken with the standard 16 megapixel mod are sharp and dynamic range is also good. If the camera is exposed directly to the opposite direction of the light, you may notice some softness in the images. The 1x is the default mode at which pictures and the videos are captured. However, the 2x is a digital zoom. If you shift to the 5x, the periscope lens will take the charge and you will be able to capture optically zoomed video and images. At 5x the zoom is perfectly fine, at 10x it is great, at 15x it is good and at 20x it is acceptable. But I won't recommend 20x mark if you are willing to capture good shots. Images that are taken with the ultra wide lens are wider and they have a good dynamic range and also the colors are well preserved. Low light photos that we captured with the Realme X3 Super Zoom didn't come quite good as we had expected. The images from the main cam came out a bit softer and noisy. Surprisingly, the Realme 6 Pro that also has the same sensor performs little better than the Realme X3 Super Zoom during night and dark environments. Night mode improves things a little bit on Super Zoom by giving shadows a much needed boost and making the darker part of the image more darker. I think the night mode marginally helps the dynamic range in the highlights but it is not that great. Overall the night mode surely makes some difference but that's not enough. Speaking about the selfies, the primary 32 megapixel lens at the front can capture really good selfies with tons of details. The colors are also pleasing and vibrant. Ultra wide lens provide an entirely different look to the selfies and the wider dynamic range also helps here. And speaking about the video recording, the Realme X3 Super Zoom is capable of recording videos at 4K on 60 frames per second with its primary lens but the ultra wide is limited to 1080p at 30 frames. Videos that are captured at 4K has a greater detail and the sharpening is also convincing and the color and the dynamic range is also perfectly balanced. The ultra wide lens is capable of recording 1080p at 30 frames per second but the footage has a limited dynamic range Overall, the quality is decent and acceptable with nice colors and contrast. The telephoto camera captures really good looking 1080 at 30 frames per second footage with excellent contrast, nice colors and good details. And speaking about the stabilization from the main camera, it is properly handled up to 4K 60fps with well removed walking shakes with little to no motion when pointing in one direction. Not just that, but also the footage taken with the ultra wide lens at 30 frames per second on 1080p is generally stabilized too. Speaking about the footage that is captured with the telephoto lens, it is not perfectly stable. There is also dedicated ultra steady mode that shoots at 1080p 60 frames per second from the main camera but I have found out the normal standard version to be more stable with well detailed and accuracy. So overall Realme X3 Super Zoom did a great job in terms of image stabilization. And the chipset in this smartphone is Snapdragon 855 which is the last year's flagship model and that have been added intentionally. Let me explain why. 
The Snapdragon 865 is the latest chipset of the company, but there's a condition that comes with it. If a smartphone company would like to introduce that in a smartphone, they would have to buy the additional 5G component along with that and that would eventually increase the cost of that smartphone. And that's one among other reasons that's increasing the cost of the smartphones that are providing the 5G functionality. The Snapdragon 855 Plus has been added to cut the cost of the smartphone and make it more affordable for consumers. And the addition of Snapdragon 855 Plus has resulted in a great performing smartphone that can cope up with any kind of day-to-day -day tasks from multitasking to a power intensive gaming. Some gamers may get annoyed by the dual camera cuts. You can simply keep these cuts in the bottom left hand corner and there won't be any problem in your gameplay. And the PUBG and Call of Duty mobile like games runs at HDR settings without any issue on this smartphone. And you can also get the advantage of 120Hz refresh rate by using some tweaks through external softwares. And during the gameplay, I've not noticed any heating issue in this smartphone at all. The UFS 3.0 storage option is also a cherry on the top in terms of the performance and it also makes the smartphone a lot faster. Speaking about the design, the Realme has not improved the design of Realme X3 a lot compared to their budget devices and the mid-range segment devices that's the Realme 6 and the Realme 6 Pro I'm talking about. And the consumer has started to criticize the brand for not changing their design from quite some time. Even though the company has launched a new smartphone, the Realme C11, and that has a quad camera setup in a square fashion and that's a major change in terms of the designing for the Realme. So we can expect a square camera at the back of Realme's upcoming flagship devices. There's nothing much new in terms of the design in the Realme's X3 except for the matte finish that we are getting at the back. It saves from the smudge and the fingerprints to be imprinted on the back and it looks pretty dope. And there's another variant in terms of color and that's known as Glacier Blue. The glass of the smartphone is curved and it helps to hold the smartphone conveniently in our hands and the grip of the smartphone is also great so as far as the in-hand experience of this device is concerned there's no doubt that it is one of the finest i prefer the right mounted fingerprint scanner to unlock the smartphone and it works surprisingly well the size of the smartphone may seem large for some but i have not noticed any issue in my single-handed operations with the smartphone and speaking about the benchmarks, I managed to get 768 scores in single core on Geekbench 5 and 2560 scores on multi core. And the rest of the benchmark scores are already being displayed on your screen right now. Speaking about the display of the smartphone, this phone has 6.6 .6 inches IPS panel, that's a flat panel with HD plus resolution that's 1080 into 2400 pixels. And with that, the screen to body ratio of the smartphone is 84.6 percent the bezels on the chin are thicker considering it's an ips panel however the bezels on the left right and the top are barely noticeable and the ips panel that's available in the smartphone even though isn't bright as the amoled panel but it is reasonably bright enough to work under a brighter daylight and the colors produced by this panel are great and vivid and as far as the viewing angles are concerned i have not found any noticeable issue the 120Hz refresh rate is the core feature of this smartphone and I'm pretty sure that you will love it in day to day usage of this smartphone. And it is not like that you are stuck with the 120Hz refresh rate. There is an option to switch back to 60Hz if you would like to. The phone is claimed to be water resistant however it doesn't carry the certification of IP68 or 67 at all. Well there are some tech YouTubers who have tested it and there was no issue found in terms of the water resistance. If you would like me to test this device, let me know that in the comment section down below. And as far as the overall display is concerned, I have no complaint about that. I would rather say it is one of the best 120Hz refresh rate that you can get in this price segment. The battery life that this phone provides is impressive and 4200mAh battery that comes with it can last for a full day under heavy usage. And you may still have some power left for the night. In our HD loop test, the battery lasted for 22 hours which is great and it all thanks to snapdragon's 855 plus that optimized the battery life of the smartphone so it can last that longer the 30 watt charger that comes with it can charge it up to 50 percent in less than 30 minutes and up to 100 percent in less than one hour so as far as the charging speed is concerned that's not a problem at all now it is time for the verdict and as far as my experience with this device is concerned, 
I'm not disappointed at all. So all in all, I would like to say if you are looking for a smartphone that has great performance along with the attractive camera setup, the Realme's X3 Super Zoom is the device that you should go for. This could be your best choice for the time being at least. And with that being said, thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to like this video, share it with your friends and family and also subscribe to TechWafer. Comment down below if you have any suggestion that can help me improve the videos. See you in the next one. Peace out.